Um, so later on, uh, Mr. Vijay moved on uh, to IRS and wherein he has worked in various service stations in India and abroad and handled multiple uh, responsibilities at office at head office while heading classification and certification statutory quality systems and technical uh, division um, sir superannuated from irs as uh, managing director uh, just about <laughs> recently about a month or so back um uh, i mean besides his experience he's been a member of the iasa statutory panel a chairman of the safety panel at iasa chairman of the iasa general policy group uh, participation at IMO and uh, of course there are a lot of sessions which through IMO IRS uh, you know uh, conducts uh, or facilitates and he's been part of that um, he's been participating in ship design and construction ship e system and equipments and not only that but also towards the future fuels you know or the future innovation that's somewhere uh, something which sir has uh, you know contributed as well so Thank you so much, sir, for agreeing to, you know, give, uh, be here, uh, share your thoughts, your knowledge, uh, and be, you know, conducting the webinar, sir. Um, while I've introduced you, sir, let me take a quick introduction from the audience. And uh, um, this is a poll which I'm launching, which if all of you could answer this uh, as to what your rank is. And then I'll hand over to Sir for uh, for his inputs. That's good participation. About ninety percent of you have answered the poll. Uh, the more, the merrier. All right, you've got ninety three percent, which is fairly decent. And let me share the results uh, in this poll. We've got about. 42% who are top four and sailing, that's the maximum, uh, you know, cohort from where the attendees are. Then 33% who are at operations level sailing, 21% who are settled ashore after sailing and 4% who have never went to sea, but they're settled ashore. So, right, sir, that's the cohort which we have, the kind of participants uh, and uh, over to you now, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So, can we go to the next slide? Yeah. Pratik to the next slide. Yeah. So, good afternoon to everyone. You could see the pool results basically, which uh, gives the how the statistics uh, are of the students or people who are attending this uh, webinar. Uh, the top four definitely are 42% who are still sailing. And there are also people who have never sailed, uh, which amounts to around 3%, I could see that. Uh, I'll try to share something which becomes essential for all of us to understand that we decided, we means we all of us who are on the screen, basically, and especially who are listening now, who are participants, basically, they decided to come to see, and that is why they joined the various colleges, whether it was leading to engineering or whether it was leading to nautical site, basically. Both are Good professions both give you some amount of recognition. Besides recognition, it gives you monetary benefit. It also gives you uh, an amount of experience what you get when you sail on ships. You become independent quite early in life because you are the sole person who is sailing and taking decisions independently, basically, at a later stage as you grow up in your career. So it is always essential that when we have decided that we are going to be either a master of a ship or whether we are going to be chief in a ship, it is essential that we should qualify that those ranks. That is my recommendation to all of you. While there are few people who have never sailed at sea, they may have some limitations. It is not that they do not have carried career ashore today. Today, in the last five to seven years, a lot of things have changed and opportunities are available for such people also. At an intermediate level, also opportunities are available. But again, when I say that you have joined this, you joined this profession, you should try to reach the top. It helps you to again go on the top in some other short profession, and that gives you hundred percent. You give hundred percent of your life and make sure that you have reached where you wanted to reach. That is the uh, my desire, basically. But definitely, if sometime family limitations are there or other limitations are there, and we 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 take some other side, so there is nothing wrong. We'll discuss over here how we can 
think about having classification society as a as a profession basically so in this uh, presentation what i am making i have listed down the agenda items which uh, uh, i'll share in my slides and uh, i will speak upon this uh, we are talking about whenever there is something called class society there is a history behind why the class society was born what created class society why the concept came so we'll talk about that again purpose because whenever we have something to do there has to be purpose there has to be objective there has to be aims to be fulfilled then what does the classification society do, does besides classification what is their role as classification what do they do besides do classing the ships and serving they make rules basically and what all things are covered under classification when i say ship classification then since you all are here and who may desire to become a surveyor so what should be the qualities of a surveyor we'll discuss it out and what surveys and what are surveys are done i'll not go too much of a detail a survey it is basically i'll brief very small amount on this what is a survey and then i'll also talk about something on who are the other stakeholders in this full game of class society who are taking inputs from us basically that will help you to understand uh, where still there are opportunities other side also but you should know as a class society you are responsible and you are giving your information to these people also can we go to the next slide Gaurav, we can take the poll. So, as per you, when was the first classification society constituted? And there's a range in years. It's it's fifty fifty. You know, years difference that we have put in. So let's see what do you think. And there's a second question to it as well. When was the first? Uh, which was the first classification society? We've got about 71% participation. Typically, at least 80% is desired. <clears throat> awesome. So we've got 81% and let me end the poll and share the results with uh, everyone. So there's a close competition between 1800 to 1850 and 1850 to 1900, sir. Almost 29-30%. Then second or third in the line is 1925 to 1950. Uh, and then 1900 to 1925. Overwhelming uh, favorite in the second question is Lloyd's, 91%. Um, over to you, sir. And Pratik, we can go to the next part. Yeah. So uh, definitely what the answer is, uh, uh, I think uh, uh, to a large extent was 18th century. Precisely, it was the year 1917, sorry, 1760 when uh, we this uh, alloys were formed, basically. So, we can say 18th century is the right answer uh, when we talk about. So, here we will talk about uh, exactly about how the history of classification starts, basically. So, sometime in the second half of the 18th century, marine insurers, all those people who used to insure the ships, which were based at the Lloyd's Coffee House in London, they developed a system for independent technical assessment of the ships for insuring, for providing insurance cover because the ships were sailing and whenever the ships are going to sail or anything is going to operate, whether it is car, they have to insure basically so that at any point of time, there is a risk is covered so that risk of accident or risk of anything, a loss of anything is always covered. And that is what these uh, people who were marine insurers used to do this basically. And this concept started the concept of a classification society. In the year 19, 1760, a committee was formed for this purpose. And as a result of this initiative, they started, they created a register book. You must have heard something called a, a Lloyd's register book or Indian Research Shipping a, a register book or a DNV register book. This register book contains the list of all the ships which have been classed over the years, basically. Even if the ships have been declassed, but still the records are available basically the records are available for a certain period of time till the ship is scrapped basically that is the our duty to ensure that the register book is maintained basically at this time an attempt was made to have something called classic a classification the condition of each ship to be maintained on an annual basis so that the insurance could be issued to these ships which were sailing basically and to have distinction between these various types of ships and for the insurance purpose, the condition of the hull was taken and the conditions of machinery and equipment was taken. 
the condition of the hull was classified as A, E, I, O or U. This basically distinguishing some A is very good, E is little less and I is little less. That is how they graded it basically according to the excellence of the construction and also its existing soundness basically. That is how the hull was uh, classified as A, E, I or U. And similarly, the equipment, machinery equipment was also classified as GMB. That means good, middling or bad basically. And in the meantime, over the years, this A, E, I, O, U and GMB has gone and something called basically now we have only something called either they are classed or not classed. But definitely Lloyd still give A1, let us say. They say A1 means A is the best in hull class and 1 is the best in the machinery part basically. That is how they say. And if the vessel is built to their classification, they put a small star symbol also to say that the vessel has been built under Lloyd's class basically. So, when we, when we talk about this, the purpose was that they wanted to see the condition of the ship before it could be ensured. They gave condition to the hull and they can, gave condition to the machinery and that is how the ships were given designation and the insurance was provided to the ship and people used to charter those ships basically. Over a period of time, this AEIO, we only went to A only. That means we want best in the class. That is how the symbol came. And we wanted best in the machinery. So we became one basically. And that is how the A1 was formed. And today the ships are either classed or they are not classed basically. That is the concept which has been there now for a lot of number of years after the classification concept came basically. So we can go to the uh, next slide. So, we talk about here the purpose of classification. As I said, anything you do, we have learned about the history. History, basically, the Lloyds were the premium, basically. They started the concept and finally, later on, many societies came up and they had their classification. But the concept remains same that we have to look at the hull and look at the machinery. And why classification societies were trusted partners in the shipping? Because they had good amount of and huge amount of accumulation of maritime knowledge and with respect to the safety and prevention of pollution, basically. And this led to having to believe in them that whatever job they do, whatever they, 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 they survey the ships and whatever condition they give to the ship, when they class a ship, the ship can be considered to be having uh, uh, a safety factor involved with this, basically. While there are other issues also, which we will discuss as we go down the slide. But Definitely based upon the knowledge, the concept took off and the insurance people started believing this basically. And classification societies provide classification services. That means the ships are constructed under their rules. And statutory service also because there are statutory, uh, there are flags based upon which there are various certificates which you are sailing. You must be knowing something called safety construction, safety equipment, safety radio, IOPP, IAPP, ISPP certificates are there. So these services are also to be issued. So this job was delegated by the various flags to the class societies because they believed that when they can class the ship and have the equipment tested during the construction time, they can also ensure that the statutory surveys can be done by them basically. It is not that the statutory surveys are only done by the class. There, there are some flags who still do the statutory survey themselves, but they want the ship to be classed with one of the class societies. And definitely beside that, we give a lot of other type of assistance to the maritime industry. Like when you talk about, when I say assistance to maritime industry and regulatory bodies, today when we talk about, when we are talking about decarbonization, it is, when we say the knowledge, the knowledge is available with the uh, class societies who, who do a lot of research, basically. They join hand with the universities, they join hand with the industry to see that the research takes place and they come out with those research to see that they are able to have equipments and their efficiencies which, which meets the today's requirement and that is how they help the maritime industry to change and bring technology to the industry. Regulatory bodies, because regulatory bodies are the bodies which represent our views, the class society's view at IMO and industry views also at IMO so that they become rules basically. That is how the class societies play a very important role. Can we go to the next slide? Now, after learning the history and the purpose of the class society, we'll say that what is that finally, they, what is their objective? Whenever I do something, it has to have an objective. And their objective is to see that when a ship is built and maintained in class over the period of time, 
her structural strength is maintained at all times. Integrity of essential parts of ship's hull and its appendages is also ensured. We also want to ensure the reliability of functions of propulsion and steering systems, power generation and auxiliary systems, which have been built into the ship in order to maintain essential services on board. Now, in all this, what we have discussed, so you can imagine that the class societies do take care of the minimum things. The minimum thing is that the hull strength has to maintain, the ship has to remain stable, her rudder and steering systems have to be operational, the main propulsion should always be operational, the auxiliary, especially the generators should always be operational and the other auxiliary machinery which helps the main engine to run or the auxiliary generators to run should always remain operational. So this becomes the core of the classification. Now when you say that, why not other things? Because other things are luxury. Today, while there are rules which cover other things, let us say, take example of air conditioning. Air conditioning today comes from MLC, but air conditioning is not a part of classification. So if in case a surveyor boards the vessel, he finds air conditioning not working, he will, as a classification, he will not give any issue. But from the MLC point of view, which is statutory point of view, he'll raise concern on that. So the purpose is that we want to maintain the minimum amount on the safety because that becomes essential for the ship to operate basically. And how do they do? How do they achieve this? This is achieved. The structural strength and the reliability of functions is maintained by doing a lot of research. We, when, when research, when we do, we do development, we do surveys basically. With the survey, we collect data. And through those data, we keep developing our rules to see that where all the problems, most amount of problems are happening. Do we need to change? Do we need to change the frequency of a survey? Do we need to change this item to be inspected more often or something like that? So that is how they keep their research to see that finally the aim is that the structure and, and the uh, uh, reliability of various equipment and systems is maintained basically. And also they, there are, let us say, when we talk about statutory survey, there are flags. When we say again flags, flags have to maintain minimum amount of requirement which is coming through IMO, but flags can have something more than that. If in case you go to a flag which wants to have more amount of safety or more amount of systems to operate basically, so we have to comply with the flag specific requirements also. That is how in nutshell, the class society besides classification where structural sense, stability, reliability of functions of equipment and systems are maintained, they also ensure that the flag instructions are followed, IMO instructions are followed, and the ship meets the class requirement as the flag requirements and IMO requirements. That is how the complete ship is maintained so that its objective is achieved, basically. Most of the commercial ships today, most of the commercial ships, when I say, they are built and surveyed to the standards of class society. That means their rules, basically. Uh, 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 now, when I say that, uh, if in case you may have the data with you, you 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 can see the data when we say today, almost 90% of the ships are classed with IX societies, basically, and 10% ships are with non-IX societies. But mostly what I have seen, ships which are on international voyages are mostly built to IX societies, basically. Later on, over a period of time, they change to non-IX societies, but the ships are mostly built to IX society. I will not say they are not built. Some river vessels, some lake vessels are built to non-IX societies also. But again, those non-IX societies do have their rules also. So finally, we say that the ships are built to some class rules, basically, which are also published and available to the common public, to the yards, shipyards, to the ship owners, so that they can also read and understand and make sure that those compliances are achieved and the ships are built. Can we go to the next slide? Right. Uh, the next poll question is a classification so society certificate a guarantee of seaworthiness of the vessel? <clears throat> yes, no, not sure. Sidesh, I see you're not able to see the slides. I would request you to maybe just log off and log in. Uh, you should be able to do it then. <clears throat> Got about 
78 percent another couple of more people if you answer you got 80 percent all right i'll wait for another five seconds for everyone to answer and they've answered now right let me share the results to everyone and uh, so 54 percent say no yes classification society is not uh so 54 percent say yes uh, the classification society certificate is a guarantee of seaworthiness and 43% say no, 4% are not sure, sir. Yeah, I'll tell you the answer basically, what is the correct answer. It is a little uh, a tricky question basically. I'll say that because see what happens, we do, the people who are listening to me definitely feel that it is when a vessel is issued with a class certificate, it has to say that it's guarantees basically yes it, there is a guarantee but the problem lies because ship is built to rules surveyed and later on operated by various people now during the survey period let us say because normally the annual surveys fall due in a period of 18 months those 18 months class society does not know because class society is not the owner of the ship class society is just a surveying authority of the ship and in between, if the owner does not inform us that they, she met with an accident or she had a damage or she had a problem and the vessel continues the class certificate, basically, it becomes a very different statement to say the vessel is maintained to class because that is where we say that class societies are not guarantee of seaworthiness. They, they do ensure that the vessel is built and they expect vessel to be operated the way they have built. But normally... Because there are situations where the vessel is not operated. I will give you examples. Vessel is loaded beyond its load line limit. Vessel is sailed with people who are not qualified. Vessel is sailed with people who are not on board only. So when these things happen, you say that the vessel is not meeting the rule requirement. You can imagine with the MLC coming up today, there are huge requirements come into force basically. You have to have rest hours. You have to have working hours. Because we want the ship to be manned efficiently. And if in case these rules are coming, because in our times, MLC was not there. But over a period of time, people have been somehow fading the rules, trying to adopt that if the vessel is less with one chief officer or anybody else, I save the money and the vessel will operate. Yes, you may not come to know, but definitely it happens when there is an accident, then you come to know that during this period, even there was no but the ship was not manned as per the safe manning document. And that is where I say that provided the condition becomes the ship can only be, we can guarantee that the seaworthiness provided a ship is manned and operated and the owners are ensuring that any time a problem, the problems are combined to the class so they can immediately attend to it. Yes, then it is possible. Otherwise, no. Can we go to the next slide? So now what is, uh, now when we talk about class as such, what they do, how do they survey, what is their aim to uh, uh, maintain strength, stability and uh, functional requirements, the machinery, statute certificates and surveys. So here we come out with classification certificate because those statute certificates when we talked about in the previous slide were issued on behalf of the flag basically. But this class certificate is issued by the class society on its own behalf. So the class certificate issued to the ship should not be construed as a warranty of safety, fitness for the purpose or seaworthiness of the ship. So that answers the question which was raised basically. And why it is so, we'll come over there. The class certificate is only an attestation that the vessel is in compliance with the rules developed and published by the society. Class societies are not guarantors of safety of life, property at sea or seaworthiness of the vessel. That is why. And why it is so? It is due to the fact that although the classification of the vessel is based upon the understanding that the vessel is loaded, operated and maintained in a proper manner by competent and qualified personnel, the society has no control over how a vessel is operated and personnel are manning the vessel so the society can guarantee this basically. So 
we can only say that the class society is attesting that the vessel is built to the rules basically after that it is the duty of the owner or the manager to see that the ship is operated the way it was designed the way it was given to them don't make any changes to the structure any changes you want to make you can make but get it approved by the class society the class society attends the vessel approves the plan and then modifies it and then gives you class settled you operate it make sure that the vessel is manned as per the manning document issued by the flag operated the way it is desired to be operated and then only it can be considered that it will give you confidence that the class set has a meaning basically otherwise the class set does not stand guarantee basically can we go to the next slide not going next slide Pratik. yes so now whenever let us say class society comes into picture somebody has to recognize it and if in, in fact when we talk about and uh, uh, if in case somebody wants to become an ix member uh, it is essential that uh, 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 that class society should be recognized by its national flag also or there should be a flag to say that yes uh, they, they have verified the experience and they support that this class society is eligible to become a member of the IX society basically. And uh, the same thing goes if in case the class societies have to be recognized by IMO. Uh, today, uh, class societies are listed under a, a, a resolution which are the recognized class societies. It is listed over there because since the goal-based standards have come, all class societies rules are vetted and they are audited by IMO basically. And that is where the reference has been given in SOLAS basically. If in case you read your SOLAS chapter 2-1, regulation 3-1 very clearly states that in addition to the requirements of the other SOLAS regulations, there are while other regulations, ships shall be designed, constructed and maintained in compliance with the stand structural, mechanical and electrical requirements of class society, which is recognized by the administration in accordance with the provisions of regulation, this, 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 this. So what I'm trying to say, even IMO says that if the vessel is built according to the rules of class society, which has been recognized by the administration, that is considered to be as if she is recognized to be issued with the statutory certificates on behalf of the flag, basically. Otherwise, those services do not stand any value. And from this slide, we also understand that the class societies do have importance while they are independent from the flags that they are recognized by the administrations and these administrations being member of the IMO, they recognize each other also. That means we are recognized by other flags also. But for uh, for recognizing that these flags come and audit the class societies and then only they recognize that. The state way don't believe a particular flag but they have their own system to check whether they can rely upon this class society or not. Can we go to the next slide? So what is the final role of a class society? A vessel has to build in accordance with the applicable rules of an IX society, which may be assigned by a class designation by society on statutory completion of relevant survey. When I say class designation, just now we discussed in the beginning that A1 was given basically. That is a class designation basically. That means how uh, the vessel hull and machinery have been classed basically, whether they have to the best standard. Because when you say about only the, when I said that they are all ships are built to the best standard, only thing is that the difference is that she's a sea going or she's a coastal vessel. That is where the various lies. But in the coastal also, they, it has to be built to the best in class basically. Because there's nothing like you can go to a lower category or middle category. Best in class for coastal, best in class for sea going, best in class for inland vessels. So all these have been well defined and that is how the vessel should be built to the rules. And the rules have been laid down in that fashion. Uh, by the class societies, every class societies. And for ship in service, the society carries out surveys to verify that ship remains in compliance with the rules. After the vessel has been constructed, she is handed to the owner and it is the owner's duty to offer the ship at particular intervals. Those particular intervals are communicated to the manager or the owner by way of survey status. He knows when the ship has to be offered. There is a period given basically. You must be knowing if in case people who are sailing the annual survey has a window, the intermediate survey has a window, the docking survey has a window. Within that window, you can always request a class society to come and board 
and they offer the ship for survey so that the surveyor can come verify the ship meets a rule requirement if not they will recommend the recommendation has to be completed so that they can endorse and that is how the ship is maintained and that is the role of class society and in the last paragraph what i have written is that should any defect that may affect class become apparent or damages be sustained between relevant surveys, the owner is required to inform the society concerned without delay now this we talked about first that period of survey but during period of survey besides that let us say the vessel is affected or damaged basically to whatever reason it is the duty of the owner to inform the class not to keep quiet and that is where we say that a class why the class doesn't guarantee the settlement because unless the owner takes ensures that he is always going to inform and then only it can be considered that the class will have a validity and it will have more amount of soundness basically can we go to the next slide so this what i said in the beginning also it is our understanding that when the vessel has been built to rules it should be operated loaded and maintained in a proper manner by the competent people and vessel is maintained in class provided that in the opinion of the society concerned it remains in compliance the relevant rules as ascertained by the periodic and non-periodic survey periodic surveys what i said periodic surveys are annual survey class annual survey machinery docking survey tail shard survey boiler survey they are periodic survey and non-periodic surveys are basically like damage survey or due to any other reason owner wants to have the vessel surveyed by the class society that is the non-periodic survey basically so in nutshell the vessel has to build to the rules of the class society it has to be maintained by the owners and the operators of the vessel as per the class society rules she should be offered for survey at periodic intervals as communicated by the class society to the owner or manager as related in the survey status and if they find during the period of surveys that vessel has been affected due to any damage it should be informed then it becomes a good cycle and a good role between the owner, manager and class society. Can we go to the next slide? So, when we said just now that the class societies uh, do the classification survey or the build the vessel to their rules and that is how the class rules comes into picture. The purpose is to say that the class rule will ensure the safety and structural integrity uh, of the uh, ship and building the ship to a certain standard. Uh, beside rules, class society also refer to the international rules also because there are some certain construction standards also. Those construction standards since available in industry, we adopt those standards. Let us say IEC, International Electrical Technical, Electrotechnical Standards are adopted basically because uh, they are so well established that it is no point class society researching on those and that is how those standards are also adopted by us rather than we doing research there are others who are doing research we make use of those research basically and adopt them in our rules basically so they have, the rules have significance rules serve as a blueprint of the ship design construction and periodic maintenance essential for maritime safety that means with the rules it helps us that to see that the vessel has been built to those rules she has been served because rules also specify the intervals of survey because every survey has a periodicity and these are all mentioned in the rules basically. Today, all class societies have got more or less same amount of periodicity of rules because they are coming from IMO, harmonized system of survey and certification. That is the periodicity more or less same basically. But earlier, they were adopted. We had a two-yearly safety equipment survey, one-yearly radio survey, but today everything has been harmonized for five-yearly surveys. If the advantage to that effect is that the surveyor boards the vessel once he does not keep boarding every now and then and does not disturb the ship people to affect uh, uh, from their normal operations and the vessel is maintained by the owner and we come at once in a year to see that everything is maintained or not and we endorse the certificate. Rule development is a part of our uh, job as a class society basically and this is done based upon our research. The knowledge gained basically and knowledge gained by ourselves or knowledge gained in the industry everything is becomes a part of the rule basically the rule cycle and the next slides i'll tell you how the rule development takes place that will be better over there again when we say rule implementation process rules have to be implemented by the yards when they are constructing rules have to be implemented by the owners or manager when they are serving the ships rules and uh, have to implement by the ship staff to see that the vessel is maintained the classification surveys are dealt with by them in a proper manner so all those things are detailed in the implementation process Verification process that the class society reviews 
when the vessel has to build the plans are submitted against the rules we verify that the vessel has been the plans have been submitted which meets the rules and then the vessel is built at the building time also we see that the vessel built to those uh, plans and the standards are maintained when i say industry standards or class standard basically and the importance of the rule is that they have to be adhered to so that the reliability of its rules is maintained and what we talk about the structural strength and stability and functional requirements of ship systems and equipment is maintained basically that is how the rule helps us to see that a ship is always safe basically can we go to the next slide I think we have a poll question on the next slide. And uh, we know classification society helps in the rule development. So how many of you are aware of the rule development cycle for the classification society? It will help us to sort of to probably go, you know, at, at what depth, you know, uh, as uh, if you tell us how much aware you are. I think you can go to the next slide as well. Okay. So, um, sir, please. Uh, can you go? To, can I go to the next slide? No. Right. I'm, I'm, I'll just end okay. the poll and share the results. Uh -huh. Almost forty nine percent are not aware. Twenty four percent have heard, and twenty seven percent are aware of it. Okay, we'll answer that. We'll answer that so that people are aware. Basically, even if they are not aware or they are aware, they should be aware a hundred percent. Basically, uh, this I have drawn a cycle basically, and uh, uh, this cycle uh, starts from the point the arrow where is there the blue arrow which is there basically. The blue arrow is basically the research which we do. A lot of research is done uh, uh, for making rules. Research is based upon the data collection. Research is based upon the feedback. And that is how the rules are made. And that is why the two arrows, which are pink and blue, become an input for the formation of the rules. The research, of, the research what the class society does and the feedback, which is obtained by the clients, feedback obtained by our own surveys, basically, or feedback obtained by uh, the uh, yards or uh, the equipment manufacturer, everything is in, becomes input for the formation of the rules. And once the rules are made, basically, and if the owner wants his vessel to build or the yard wants a vessel to be built, he uses these rules. And then these rules are based upon these rules. The plans are prepared by the yard and they are submitted to the class society for approval. Approval means, yes, class society is verified that the plan submitted by the yard meets the rule requirement. And now the vessel can start its construction. And that is how once the design verification is done, the plans are approved and then the vessel start constructing and we do the survey during construction of the vessel to see that the plans are being adhered to. That time we don't read the rules now. We, because the rules have been read at the time of preparing a plan, the plan should be so clearly uh, uh, spelt in a manner that I don't have to go to the rules again and again because otherwise People don't have time. It's a waste of time, basically. The plan should be so sufficiently detailed that it takes care of all the details which is required for a surveyor to refer and for the yard to refer, basically. And once the vessel has been built and verified during construction, the vessel is issued the class certificate. And then it is the owner's duty to see that it is offered for the surveys, periodic survey, what we said, uh, so that the vessel is uh, inspected in those times or otherwise if in case the vessel has suffered any damage or any problem it should be informed for a non-periodic survey and then it goes on like this basically and the vessel keeps running that is a rule development cycle there is a part of that what, what forms other inputs to rule i'll go to the next slide next slide yes now whenever rules are made basically today uh, as I said, there are various class societies which are giving inputs to their flags and the flag administrations are giving input to IMO and IMO is also developing rules, especially when we talk about today, when we talk about alternate fuels, basically, while class societies have developed, basically, to see that these rules are internationally recognized, IMO also formulates them, basically. So, when a class society makes the rule book, basically, it ensures that we take into account 
various requirements. My own research work, IMO inputs, IX input, flag state input, industry requirements, research finding from our own research or industry research, and in-service feedback, all these things become an input for the rule development, basically. When I say IX requirement, because IX societies also, what they do besides each society developing a rule, they also ensure that there are certain uniform standards set in. That means between A and B and C and D, those 12 class societies, there are certain minimum standards they have to maintain. It's not that ki you will have a lower standard. There are certain standards, they are called unified, unified requirements. They have to be met. So those unified requirements become fundamental that you cannot construct a ship unless you have adopted those unified requirements and they become a part of the rule of each IX society, basically. Other non-IX society can also adopt because these are available on the internet uh, for everybody, basically. You can also have a look. Once you go to the IX website, you'll find this unified requirements, U, R, A, B, C, Z, W, all those things are there. Uh, they are for various sections, how to do a uniform survey, how to uh, uniform welding, uh, uniform uh, construction, all those things are detailed in those uh, U, R, A to Z, basically. Uh, that becomes unified requirement, basically. And uh, whenever a rule is developed by, by a class society, it cannot be just made public. The class society has to have a technical committee. The technical committee consists of all learned people, learned people from the flag, learned people from the society, learned people from the uh, uh, engine builders, learned people from the yards, learned people from uh, uh, even the repairers also, so that their inputs are taken at the time when the rules have to be released so that they can give input, any input which is considered relevant. The, the chairman technical committee recommends the class society to adopt it and then only the rules are published basically to see that it is then made uh, useful for the public at large, basically. With the rule book, uh, when the rules are published, a, a class society has to ensure that every surveyor in the class society gets relevant. So they do training, they prepare guidelines, they prepare survey procedures. And that is how the full thing later on established into a process so that it is not only rule. Rule making is one process, but making sure the rule is made available and made known to each and every person in the class society is important. Rule is made relevant, useful, uh, understandable to the others in the industry, stakeholders. We also want that. That is how we, we, we have various meetings with the stakeholders after the rules have been made so that our understanding of rules is communicated because rule has a meaning basic. We should read the rule in the same manner the way it is understood by the class society and that is where the meetings are arranged by the class society with the industry so that they communicate to them that that is how our rules have been made and that is the understanding of the rules. Can we go to the next slide? So, all this while we have discussed about uh, classification basically and now we talk about classification society. The classification was a process which talked about issuing a class certificate and class certificate talks about strength and uh, function requirements of the machinery and equipment, basically. And what does this class society, when we say class society, uh, the, cla uh, the classification is done by a class society. And this class society is an organization. You can say that why the word society has come, that's very important to be understood. Because class societies are not business organizations. These are societies where we want each one of us are living to the same standard adopt the same standard so that we do not have any high and low amongst each one of us. Uh, organizations, when we say they are business organizations where the concept of uh, competition comes basically, but within the class society, it is more of a knowledge base basically. And that is why the word society has been used in the past. Though today we are all becoming business oriented basically, but the concept of society should remain if indeed we want ship to remain safe basically. So this organization, which is a class society, publishes its own rules, including the technical requirements in relation to design, construction, survey or ships. With, and they have the capacity to apply because when we make rules, we should have the, that. When I said that we make sure the rules are understood by everybody because so that we have the capacity. Tomorrow when the work is given, it should not so happen that while I have made the rules, but I don't have the capacity to implement it because I don't have the staff. The staff has to be made understandable. So they, they should have the capacity to apply it. They should have the capacity to maintain it. It is not that once applied after that failed. No, you should be able to maintain the rules 
for all the times and the main rule should maintain and understood by everybody in the class society in the same manner and that is where the calibration of the survey takes place basically and also over a period of time when we say the feedback is taken by the industry or feedback is taken by by survey process they want that rules should be updated because it's very essential like let us say when i'll give you an example basically uh, when we started uh, this uh, i joined irs sometime in 1990 and we talked about let us say a wall has to be inspected that time we said the every wall which is more than 50 nb has to be inspected by the class society but over a period of time from 50 nb we came to 80 nb a nominal bore size that below 80 nb it can be manufacturer declaration and above 80 nb only will class will inspect it this all came based upon that we 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 have the data and we found that when we did not find defects in lower bore the walls but we found defects more into larger size walls and that is why we said that the larger size walls should be definitely constructed or fabricated in in front of our eyes where the let us say the casting should be done the fabrication should be in our plan we should test it otherwise lower walls people are confident and i can accept the manufacturer certificate also that is how the rules are applied and that is how we ensure that the cost is controlled at the same time the quality is also controlled so these uh, class societies basically also uh, after the vessel has been built they verify the compliance with the rules during plan approval stage and during the service life to service basically and when the vessel is built and issue the class search so mean they they log it all these thing that this ship was built on so and so date and what uh, uh, what type of ship was with a tanker or a bulk carrier whatever the type of ship and this is entered in register book this register books available it's mandatory for every class society to have a register book book with them and specifically it is very important it is not that what i have written the last is not controlled by and does not have uh the class owner basically here we are trying to say the class societies are independent basically should be independent and this is a requirement of the iax basically so that the class society is not controlled by a ship owner if in case a class society is built by controlled by the ship owner then there will be a problem because he will try to see that the ship is managed the way he wants that is why they have to remain independent they should be independent they should have no relation with the ship owner or a manager or a yard they should be independent of all these manufacturers basically definitely as i said for class to have its rules and class be able to recognize she has to be authorized by the flag administration as i stated to you earlier in the solar chapter 11-1 which appears that a reference of class society has been given uh, uh, for the construction and it is recognized by even im also can we go to the next slide so what is the classification process uh, i have told this process but again i'll brief you the classification process again starts from the time when the yard develops the drawing submits the drawing to class society the class society examines those plans to see that the vessel is plan submitted meets the rule requirements and the plans are then approved once the plans are approved the yard starts constructing the vessel the surveyors go on board to see that the vessel is being constructed as per the uh plans and once the vessel is constructed basically before the vessel is completed sea trials are constructed before that basin trials are also there the basin trials are for the purpose that when we go to the sea before we go to the sea we have tried out the machinery for specific number of hours to see that we don't find any problem when we are going for sea trials and we come and uh, we have the set of sea trials are conducted and during sea trials we do all sorts of trials maneuvering trials uh, steering trials main engine endurance trials whatever we can do we should do basically because this is the time we are seeing the endurance of the ship that means ship has got that resistance and she can face the tough weather she can take sharp turns she can have sharp breaks i want to stop the ship start the ship uh, how many starts she can give with the number of uh, air, uh, uh, air. air bottles all those things which are required by the rules is done during this time basically and once she has done the satisfied sea trials and we have seen the statutory equipment working performing well she issued the class and statute certificates and then the vessel is given to the owner he starts operating the ship and he then offer the ship at periodic intervals as communicated to him by the class society and mention this which is mentioned the survey status and the vessel continues with the class basically when he goes on the survey goes on board when the owner calls him he goes on board he examines the ship and if the ship is found to meeting the requirement he endorses the certificate and vessel is allowed to sail 
and if there are recommendations, the recommendations need to be dealt with before the vessel separates and endorsed for the periodic surveys, basically. Can we go to the next slide? Right. I think this is the question which uh, probably an answer which a lot of the attendees would be waiting for. Uh, so, but um, how many of you would like to become a classification server? Definitely, yes. You're not sure about the role and progressions. You need some education and to make a decision and no. And so, I mean, while you answer the question in the chat window, there have been a few questions. Maybe you can address them uh, in the next few slides. The questions have been, a, a person has been a second engineer with a class one license. Can he uh, work as a, a classification surveyor? Can masters enter um, uh, or deck officers with say chief officers also? ETOs, there has been a question from an ETO. Uh, how can he enter? So this is gen generic questions which I've got, but we'll go into the details of the question later on, but something which you could answer in the next few slides. I'll, I'll answer. I'll answer. I'll end the poll and I'm sharing results. So it's a 70% definitely yes. <laughs> Probably that's the main reason why they are here. And 28% they are not aware of the rules in program. Over to you, sir. Yeah, yeah. I'll explain to them. So first of all, I'll good to, good to see that many people would like to become a class server. So I'll say that my profession will remain still the time I die. So I'll be happy with that, basically. May God bless all of you who have decided to become a class server. I'll tell you why one should become a class server. It has advantages. Uh, while I don't say there are no advantages to the other profession also, but since I'm from this profession, I'll definitely plead for that, basically. And all those who have said that we don't know, I would like to know more about this profession, I'll tell you about that also. But before I go to that part, the two questions uh, which people have answered basically and where people would like to know some more information, I'll tell that. But let us read this. This I have just jotted it down from the IX website basically. Uh, 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 please read it basically and I will read it for you so that you understand that ki what is the degree of importance we give to the surveyor basically. Let me tell you, it is a huge amount of responsibility given to the surveyor and that is where his ethics and his attributes play a very important role. So let us read it. So what do they say? What IAX has written? It is an instruction or, or whatever we say. Utmost care and discrimination is exercised in the selection of men of talent. Integrity and firmness as surveyors on whom the practical efficacy of the system and the contemplated advantages must so materially depend. The committee have in their judgment appointed these persons only who appear to them to be most competent to discharge the important duties of their situations with fidelity and ability and to ensure strict and impartial justice to all parties whose property shall come under their supervision. So, like I said that, ki, who are the other stakeholders? Let me tell you, we now when we are talking about, I am a class survey, I was a class survey. You are a seafarer who's, who has been sailing on ship and that means you are present a ship manager basically. It is not that when a surveyor has to look at, he has to only look these two relations. He has to look into the relations of all aspects. He has to ensure that he gives an impartial decision because any decision taken in the interest of anybody is not correct. And that is where the class societies have to be independent of any manufacturer, of any yard, of any of any owner, manager. I Today, let me tell you, I have now worked for 34 years. I did not have any relation with any of the yard, with any of the owner, any of the manager, any of the training institute, no relationship. So that I can do an unbiased unbiased survey and give my recommendation without fear and without compulsion or without any pressure basically. And that is where these men who are going to be, who want to become a surveyor, they have to have a huge, they have huge responsibility and they have to men of ethics basically. You cannot say the ship to be certified while she is not operating. No. Because when the vessel goes to sea, if something happens, what will happen to those seafarers who are sailing on the ship? 
that is where it is essential that we remain men of ethics. And if in case we have these properties, I will call spade a spade. I have the learning attitude because when I learn only, then, on I, then only I can implement the things. I understand the things and I am able to learn. I am able to follow the rules basically and I follow those rules without discrimination, without having partiality between A and B because this fellow uh, is known to me. I uh, uh, Because over a period of time, definitely we get into relationship, but that relationship should not hamper our survey process. It has to be independent view. And that is where if in case you have those properties, you become a surveyor and you should become a surveyor. Surveying profession has an advantage, I'll say. All those people who would who say that we do not know, I'll tell you. What is survey basic? Survey is not inspection. Survey is survey because here I am not going to inspect everything. I am going to do random because it is the duty of the owner to see that the vessel is maintained. I go on the ship and random inspection I do. In this random inspection, everything found should be good. I say that the vessel is maintained busy. If in case I find things are not good, I can enhance the, my scope of survey. So it is the hands of the surveyor who is attending the ship basically as to he wants to have 100% survey into inspection, he can do that. Nobody stops it. But if he wants to do the survey in four hours also, nobody stops it. There is no time designated that any survey he has to complete in four hours or eight hours he should complete it in whatever time he feels, but not that he's wasting time to earn money. He is there on the ship. He examines it. A item, B item, C item, all perfectly good. He takes a random check of others. He finds more or less people are answering properly and the things records indicate better. He can leave it also. So it all depends upon you. You are an important person to judge. But once you have judged, your judgment plays a very important role. Your judgment can be based upon on sampling. Your judgment can be based upon 100% inspection also. It depends upon your confidence basically. So that is where we see that when you are younger, you may take more time because you will try to do 100% inspection to be sure that what is operating. As you become senior, you know that these things only give problem. Let me check this. They are good. Then I can think about it. Otherwise, I'll definitely tell them that you please maintain this. Then only I'll see the remaining items basically. And that is where you find various surveys their degree of understanding is not that their understanding is different, but their understanding is coming based upon their experience, basically. So, surveyor's job is to see that the ship is always kept maintained. The ship is built to rules. The rules are understood. The rules have to be remembered in our minds. I cannot open, the, like I said, when the plans are made, I cannot open the rule book and see that what I have to apply. The plan should be sufficiently in detail to give me the information. My training should be so much good that I don't have to read the rule book. Yes, I can always refer to the rule book because rules books are to be referred. But I should know where to refer. Other I'll waste my time basically. And that is where the uh, uh, your own wish, your own will, your own studies play a very important role. That means if surveyor, a good surveyor will have knowledge. He will always try to improve his knowledge. He will like to learn every time and all the times and then and keep make sure that he's abreast of the latest development which are happening he becomes a good surveyor, basically. And then he should be honest, ethical. These are the other soft skill traits, basically. Then you become, while you're knowledgeable, you know the rules, but you have to be ethical also. So these are the traits where you become a good surveyor. And in, in case of our profession, we, we always pass on the baton from A to B. When I am a sir, when I become senior, I have to mentor others, basically. Because with my experience, I pass on the experience to others, basically. Not that I don't share my thoughts with them. I share my thoughts with the younger people so that they learn faster than what I could learn. And that is how the baton is passed on to the younger people. If we have all these properties, learning properties, ethics properties, transforming and uh, learning, training properties, tra uh, transferring this knowledge to the others, basically, we become, we can become a server, I'll say that basically. That is what we expect from a server to be basically. So I think I have been able to answer the questions basically. What two questions are there? Some people want to be a class surveyor. They must have pumped up their mind. I welcome them. Some people did not know. I think I have been able to explain to them. But if in case you want to know more, I can prepare something which I can we can discuss later where you can have more details if you want. Thank you. Can we go to the next slide? So we talked about uh, classification surveys, basically. Uh, again, uh, 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 there are various types of surveys I'm not discussing over here. 
but uh, surveys are again we do the overall examination based upon the overall examination we talk about what is the further extent examination to be done because based upon overall only i can examine i can think about what extent further i have to go whether i have to do detail checks i do that detail checks on a sampling basis or or uh, or inspection basis i do witness certain trial there are certain mandatory things on the ship to be done mrc equipments have to be always operational like mrc generator should always be operational basically mrc fire pump should always be operational so i do the trials of those equipments mrc steering has to be operational basically communication system on the ship has to be there so navigation equipments have to be operated radio equipments have to be always remain operational so all these things while i have talked about radio and steady equipment they are statutory but basically when we say ship as a complete they also form part of this basic because if the statute is not operating i cannot say the ship can be considered for certification no so all these things become part of the survey not a part of class survey but part of the survey basically but classification survey will mostly be based upon my hull machine and machinery basically equipment part safety equipment and safety radio will come through the statutory part basically and definitely if in case you read the solas chapter 5 also talks somewhere in regulation 19 and 20 which says that before a ship leaves the port all the statutory equipment should remain operational and that is where it is essential and it is a duty the master to see that if any equipment is not operating whether it is safety equipment radio equipment or mapol equipment he has to communicate to the port state he has to inform to the flag state and he has to inform to his owner and the class they give what is the degree of whether it, there is standby system which can operate they can give a condition allow the vessel to sail or not to sail that depends upon that so now during this examination when we talk about there are defects those defects have to be rectified if the defects are rectified the vessel continues to be in class or if the defect cannot be rectified but certain defects can be subjected to temporary repair because permanent repairs cannot be effected immediately and the surveyor feels that these temporary effect do not hamper the class he issues still a class set with a condition of class or recommendation that is how the classification surveys are dealt with so it does not mean that the vessel is issued the condition of class it is bad no condition of class has been ascertained that the vessel can operate efficiently only thing is that it is not as original it has certain defect which has been rectified temporarily and this temporary repair has to be converted to permanent otherwise ship will remain in observation for some time and somebody has to board the vessel periodically and this temporary condition cannot continue for long and it has to bring the ship to the normal shape as before the way she was constructed that is the condition basically can we go to the next slide so we talked about other stakeholders whom we are responsible who take our inputs as a classification survey they are ship owners definitely ship builders are there flag administration take input from us port state take inspection they ask us to inspect the ship uh, if the vessel is detained before they can reboard the vessel so we give inputs underwriters ensure the ship ship financiers look into that who is the class society whether the class society can believe or not and that is where the ix society is play very important role charters also look into whether the vessel is classed or not whether they are issued with conditions or not a vessel has been maintained over a period of time based upon the past form because the ship service status tells what defects have been listed because charters will always see that the vessel which is without defect at any time when offered for survey that means she has been maintained periodically in a better manner than any ship where the survey board then he finds defects and he gives recommendation and then the vessel brought back so it tells the how how the ship owner behaves basically and all these things play an important role and that is where the reporting of a survey and a class society plays a very important role and these are the stakeholders basically i think i should have just put the next slide what is the next i don't think we have got any next slide yeah thank you so uh, thank you to all of you i hope i have been able to uh, uh, answer your uh, little description which i wanted to give you a class society uh, a few questions which we want people we thought that we i will i will try to answer without you asking so many questions i'll try to uh, give those doubts but still you will have lot of questions in your mind i'll see that if in case i can answer certain generic questions basically because the the people who on the screen there are chief ends also i saw two people who were supposed to be from class society one from rena and one from dnb also uh, so there are people from class society also so i will not talk about them but definitely i'll talk about people who are masters chief engineers and who are youngers second officer or chief officer or fourth engineers also so again i i will say that master chief engineers definitely if you are interested please join the class society immediately 
it is useful to you it will add value to this profession it will add value to the class society class society will feel obliged by your knowledge what you have gained because you have all the knowledge which is supposed to which class society wants basically they will definitely give their knowledge to you but you already have operation knowledge and operation knowledge plays a very important role while approving the plan also because rules are made technical point of view but how the operations will be affected where the things should be placed today we talk about human element part your uh, how uh, the equipment should play they are within the reach of the person those ergonomics also play very important role and that is how the engineers and masters uh, uh, experience plays a very important role youngers basically i'll say that when you want to join this profession try to become chief engineer master if you join before it is not that you cannot join because you may have limitations to join basically because of some other issues at home you can also join not a problem but then there will be always in your mind that can you go on the extreme top yes chances are there but chances become less and less chances are low basically so i don't say that you cannot go you can go but then that when i say percentage by chance will be less and that is where i recommend that if in case you want to join class society you should join as a master or chief engineer this will be my recommendation because they prefer that but they don't so no class society do not say no to second engineer or chief officer or they don't say no to fourth engineer no you are all important people because you have the knowledge but what otherwise what is the difference between master and a, four, a chief engineer what is the difference between chief engineer and fourth engineer there has to be a difference that is how the ranks have come and we would like to have that experience with you basically that is where we'll say that how best you should try to see that you go to the topmost rank in your profession qualification and skills needed i have told you you should be having a learning attitude always learning to read you should be able to read and understand because uh, 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 the knowledge has to be gained by you you have to keep yourself abreast of the knowledge and share the knowledge basically because most of the time we don't share the knowledge you should be able to share your knowledge with your juniors basically you so you can share the knowledge with the owners managers basically because they are the stakeholders the moment they are knowledgeable it becomes easy for you to do the survey basically so that is the skill you have you should be ethical you should be honest you should be straight forward basically so that there is no ambiguity in, in your understanding of yes no there is nothing like the tolerance limit no it is either yes or no uh, personality that suits you hard work it's huge hard work you go inside the tanks you should the energy to stay inside the tanks to do the survey for 8 8 hours also you sweat a lot you should have energy you should have your own endurance to see that you can do hard work you have to travel a lot you have to travel a lot from a point to b point sometimes though we feel that the while sailing only you are away from your families but sometimes during new construction going on abroad you may stay abroad for 3 3 4 4 months while the construction goes on or for sailing survey you are months on the ship to see that the sailing surveys are done so these skills you should have that you can stay advantage today is that the mobile is there you can contact your families in our times those things were not there but today it is there so you can always have added advantage financial benefits yes it's a good profession it pays as good as any other profession will pay ashore uh, we may not be able to pay as good as a owner basically but definitely it is as close as but the advantage is that you become a knowledgeable person and uh, useful to the society finally it's not only money it is also the knowledge is plays very important role which you carry all the times that is your money can go away but knowledge nobody can take so knowledge is very important basically and opportunities are always there like i said that people who have said 70% they want to join i am very happy if you join I, many class societies are interested to have you you can immediately approach them if in case you are master chief in your fourth in years or uh, junior officers definitely they will take you but again i'll expect master and chief net to approach so that uh, others have gone and fulfilled their responsibility of the profession basically uh, talking about your future future is always bright i also joined as a surveyor 30 years back and today i have signed up from irs as a md basically uh, uh, worked in almost everywhere wherever class wanted me to work and finally i have uh, signed up as md and uh, so there is uh, you have uh, all the chances of going up uh, in the ladder basically and uh, uh, when class society is looking for you to join they are not checking your knowledge about because you are already a master and chief engineer you have passed those exams they only want to check whether you have desire to learn more or not you have desire to learn they definitely want such people and that is what i'll say that some questions which you may be in my mind i jotted them out to see that if in case i can answer them 
uh, to reduce the question and answer call basically. But still, if you have questions, I'll be able to answer that. Yes, Gaurav. Thank you so much, sir. Um, and uh, Pratik, you can stop sharing the screen now. Um, so, um, um, I mean, you were here for, you talked for more than an hour and you kept 100 people, you know, of us engaged through that time. I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, that's an achievement in, a, in, a, in itself because you were the only one speaking. And uh, so, so amazing session, sir. Um, and just this, just to answer Herschel's question that, um, you know, the session was about, you know, entry into classification society, but before how you enter and who can enter, I think what sir wanted to do was give a whole brief uh, about classification societies. You should know the context. You should know what people do over there. Uh, what do the surveyors do? And then of course, in the last 10 minutes, in a very succinct manner, Herschel, sir was able to tell the entry criteria uh, of a uh, 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 and and how a person um, the knowledge the skills the progression which can be there in a classification society so explain all of that um sir what i'll do is a few questions were probably not answered but uh so i'll, I'll just glance through the questions and maybe ask those questions from you sir yes. um and herschel's question to start was uh, is there a minimum age for entry into the classification? Age entry definitely is there, but varies with the time. It all depends upon supply and demand. When I joined again, I'll compare today and tomorrow or yesterday. Basically, when I joined, the advertisement stated that not more than 32 years old. I joined at 29, basically. Oh. So that was the time. Today... Not many people join because they because we took very less time to clear our exams. We are more focused towards exams. We cleared our exams in I think my fifth and two chief engineer, I cleared in four and a half years total selling period. And I joined early basically because my desire was to go ashore and learn the learn more from the shore, basically. And that is where I left early and I continued over here. So, but today we take people at 34 also, 38 also, sometimes 42 also we have taken. So, but you can expect people to be or 50 55 40 42 is a maximum because when you that you are adding some value where you're coming with some experience also that's what we say but otherwise you can say 35 38 is a preferred age group where we will say 34 35 is a preferred age group. question from ku is there a retirement there is a retirement age but what's the retirement age sir Retirement age is basically 60 in our class society. It varies from class to class. Some class societies are 62. In IRS, it was 60. But if in case your health is good and your you are needed, they go, they extend your term by two years or three years or four years, whatever they say, basically. But the maximum age person can serve is 65 years in IRS, basically. Uh, in uh, Lloyd's also, I think it is same 60 plus they go 62. Also, people retire 64. Also, it all depends upon the need and the uh, demand, basically. And your health health parameters, basically. I understand, sir. Um, so, um, Pratik, I'll take your question in the end. Let me take all the questions on career progression and the questions around other, which are not related to career, I'll probably take them in the end. Um, Divya's question on whether a, a second engineer with a chief engineer license can enter, which you answered, they can. Um, then another question from Divya is, and I'm clubbing two of his queries, um, is having an MBA degree or a chartered engineer status um, uh, preferred or given any additional uh, points for selection in the classification society? No, no, no such. MBA, it does not add value too much uh, in the initial stages, basically. So uh, it all depends at what rank are you joining as a business manager. Sometimes today business manager also rank is that time it may be considered, but it is one in many, basically. We don't require so many business managers, basically. So if in case you are one in many and you have, that advantage you may get, provided we are taking you for that purpose, basically. But normally, class societies take for the purpose of survey and certification. So it all depends upon if in case there is one vacancy and you ha have an MBA, it will add value. But if in case you are joining as a surveyor, then it will not have value. So it all depends upon the situation. Okay. <clears throat> Sir, another question, and I'm taking this uh, base question from Kanish Kohli and probably adding my two cents to it. So, for example, a person who has not become a chief engineer or doesn't have a chief engineer license or master's license, but they've already 
transition rush over as third engineer or second officer and then they are doing something else uh, right maybe into pms or maybe into chartering or maybe into hsq a can they enter into classification they and can what is the role they, they can enter they can enter there is no uh, stop over there right i said uh, that if they want to become md of the organization they may not be able to become right right so there will be some limitation where they can rise basically i am just saying that Yeah. So because okay. if the any i always say every child has a dream every child wants to grow every child wants to go to the top he had a limitation i say that even if let us suppose a chief officer or a second officer wants to join this profession at some point in time he should think that go go back to see complete your masters and again come back basically because this expense is not going to go waste because uh, you will again come back to the profession after doing that and then i think you can go to the top basically and this is what i used to advise to my youngers basically and some have heard also some don't care basically they have limitations but uh, if they want to continue class they can join the class but they may not be able to go to the highest rank this i'll say that understood sir so, um the typical uh, um a pipeline is that you join as a surveyor and then you move on in the classification especially for uh, sailing guys but now with technology coming in with maybe voyage optimization coming in with other you know streams coming in how do you see the uh, the 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 role of uh, uh, or or how do you see these guys getting into those roles do you feel that in technology it's probably a it guy who's better suited or maybe a um, an engineer with some technology knowledge is better um, your thoughts on that definitely definitely in fact today i have now settled ashore now let me tell you i am working with fourth engineers let me tell you. and i'm working with those fourth engineers who are technology conscious basically because my younger people they can give me because uh, when you talk about they have for me they know little knowledge i have more knowledge i can share with them and they have technique they they are more into it basically uh, it helps me to do the job which i want to do now uh, so in the same way class society are also considering that so if in case you are good at uh, when you say application through it i think you are used to because today everything is become it oriented this for a person who is only from it background but a person who is from a who is basically a marine engineer and also having it i think it adds skill to that basically and it is required and it will add value to the class society okay right, sir um sir are there and this is from captain amit are there any remote audit jobs also in classification society and i think there was someone else also who asked a question uh, can you work from home in a classification society so yes a good question first of all uh, remote audits basically when you say uh, remote audits were basically during covid period and uh, though imo is discussing upon how remote survey remote audit should be accepted or not emsa australian maritime safety agency totally rejects any survey done by remote basically because again flag admission play a very important role so remote survey remote audits are basically not the prerogative of the class but the prerogative of the flag if they allow we do if they don't allow we don't do we cannot say that we should do it and we can do it i cannot do it if the flag does not want a flag does not allow me to do it. so uh, procedures are there we have made all procedures basically because there are situations where you cannot uh, go on board basically under those circumstances flag administration also authorizes but it is one in 100 cases basically one in million cases basically today but in covid times it was in all the cases basically so with that practice it has become today remote sir remote audits uh, but uh, they are not entertained to a large extent european union australian maritime safety agency they do not want they don't accept it ix has made procedure which they do accept but in a limited scenario basically so i'll not say that they are not accepted or accepted but in a limited scenario understood sir um so a question from divyam was another question from him diploma or advanced diploma in surveying does it uh, would you give certain more marks to a person who has this qualification to get into to induct into classification society i didn't get diploma in surveying basically what is this diploma in surveying um there are a few companies like lloyds maritime uh, i think they offer this these uh, qualification they they offer certification courses uh, if a person has done these certification courses uh, are the chances of getting into classification do they increase 
could be could be because what happens i have not heard in irs class basically because uh, irs uh, we did not have such uh, thing as diploma or something like that neither we have such stream uh, but uh, if lloyds have basically and they are taking i think uh, irs should not have also uh, hesitation to take such people basically i'll say that it is only that they have to be aware basically and uh, uh, as they become aware uh, they will always entertain that because it's something he has learned more than his basic profession basically it is added advantage only i'll say that so what's the level of fitness required to join uh, classification fitness you should remain medically fit all the times that is always there <laughs> a state of alertness we do have something called medical checks to be done uh, we have below 40 every two years after 40 every one year and the the tests have to be done by the medical uh, faculty wherever they have uh, uh, centers where IRS wants us to go, used to go, and the reports go directly to the office basically for their verification. So that means you have to remain medical fit, medically fit all the times basically. Sometimes so, people, let us say, suppose somebody has an injury and he you know doesn't not able to walk properly. Abhi, if in case you allow him to go on the ship, you are asking for a trouble only. So if it's in such cases, it is it is again a consideration that since he has been there with us. He can come to head office where it's more of a desk job and he can be utilized well. We do that also, basically. So class society do give into this. And last the last time, last question you had something that class society allow to work from home or not. Yes, class societies do allow people to work from home at times, not but not all class societies, but some class societies. I understand, sir. Um <clears throat> sir, uh, as far as I understood from you, there is no particular certification or course required to enter into classification society but there have been three or four different people who have asked uh, this same question and so i just wanted to reconfirm from you this is there any certification course required no it is only we require let us say i want to take a surveyor he should be a class one engineer or a master mariner if in case he is not of that rank he mentions fourth engineer or a second officer or a chief officer. We do take that. But when we advertise, we don't say that we require second officers or this. We require master or chief engineer. People who have lower ranks, they can directly apply based upon the vacancy and the need. They are honored that. But when we make advertisement, we don't say that second lower ranks. We would prefer to have masters and chief engineer, like I said. And that is how that is. But we don't discourage them from joining if they have made an application and there is a need. And we have taken such people also. And close societies are taking also. Um, so this is probably specifically for IRS. Um, do you have a preference in terms of the COC the person has? For example, I mean, a UK COC, Australian, Singapore COC? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay. No, no particular COC. It should be a COC from a recognized flag, basically. Okay. Who's a part of the membership of IM. Okay. Um. Another question from Siam, and I have to ask, is there a part-time opportunity also available? No, no, no. We are full-time surveyors. We can't work anywhere else. All throughout my 34 years, I did not look port or starboard. I looked straight. I could not do any other job. And that is why this, uh, your uh, today's session has been delayed because uh, I was not given a opportunity to think about to speak at that point of time because it is going out of the way. And uh, today, now when I'm not a part of IRS, I'm able to speak. Uh, because that time it was not correct on my part to speak basically because I'm going out of the profession. So that is how you have to be only for IRS. Basically. I think this is a very important point for everyone to know that, you know, uh, almost all classification societies when a person is working, I mean, um, going out public and expressing personal opinions uh, is kind of guarded. Uh, it's yes. not you have to speak the views of the class society basically. Right, right. Even if you have different views, you have to speak the views of the class society. Because class society is researched and then they have come to that conclusion. Right. Um, sir, now, um, uh, the couple of questions, how do people approach, how do people apply? Is it just go on the website and look at opportunities and just apply over there? See, yes, there are. See, every Institute of Marriages magazine carries this ad. You can apply through that. You can go to the website, apply over there. You can go to the website, have a look on the HR department straight away, apply to that. Their email ID is there. 
there are many ways there is not only a particular way you can you can approach in fact when i joined uh, i i joined in a manner that a surveyor came on board and i liked his profession and i told him i want to join he said you give me your cv i'll pass it on to irs so he took my cv by hand he came by board and he gave to the class society and then i was called so it is not a fixed way basically whatever way you come across any surveyor you can give a your cv to him he'll be able to hand over to the hr and that is how you respond there are today in my time email was not there so i'm saying so but today there are many me means basically in yeah. person you can go to the office and give it not a problem you can as irs office is known you can go meet the person give your cv to them anyway many ways basically and yeah. this is not only for irs for other class societies also yeah, that's okay. um um okay one second ha uh, sir a uh, couple of questions is it possible for you to tell about uh, the remuneration package and the structure which uh, maybe irs was offering or or which generally uh, classification society is offering uh, irs structure basically it is structure it is not that it is random that you come i give you something and he comes i give you something it is fixed wages for everybody who joins as a particular rank you join as a surveyor you will be given a particular wage basically and that is fixed basically as of today a chief engineer or a master who joins with at least minimum experience of one year he takes at least 30 lakhs rupees plus car plus petrol expenses when he is working in field basically it's a good package we have recently only when i was there january we revised basically and uh, i think this today is the best package in the industry amongst all the class societies so that and as you grow then you go to the ranks and you get your uh, performance and based upon the performance you are able to earn that is what i can say that you guys a fantastic package because you're also uh, providing other perks as well yes uh, also Plus I mean training is there training is there you are sent abroad for training purposes there are other things also which we don't charge so this is only which comes in hand the knowledge which you gain the knowledge for that expense we have that is besides the point so for that we don't charge from this so 30 lakhs is basically which comes with you and remaining is basically which irs still spends because uh, there is a huge amount of money spent for a surveyor to become a surveyor basically we sp we spend almost 25 man days for training only in the initial days so 25 man days you are getting wages for no work basically and there are various trainings happening throughout the year and in five years you go through various trainings basically so all those are when you look at uh, i have spent a lot of money on that. and class society spent a lot so like you have the satisfaction of being part of you know uh, 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 a cohort which is developing the rules regulation guiding research you know all of that work which you usually don't, don't get a chance into other fields correct it gives you that opportunity yes. sir if you don't mind how many um, mariners were in iris uh, when you retired any just approximately uh, roughly i'll say around total i'll including staff i'll say 100 staff and around 400 surveyors basically i'm talking from the md till the lowest level 400 surveyors 400 yes all over the world i'll say that wow that's that's an amazing number the total staff strength was around 500 something 530 wow. because we have because there are draftsmen who Who do there are diploma holders who do some jobs basically. Uh, there are uh, staff which is uh, IT driven basically. IT itself is today we have IT around forty people forty to forty five uh, strength of IT only basically. Right. So uh, because I say IT plays a very today reporting is all IT driven basically. Correct. Correct. Um, sir, there's a question from Vineet, uh, and you mentioned that a person can join probably as a junior level at operations level, then go back sailing, and then, uh, you know, that will be better for him. So, is there a possibility of a person, uh, taking a sabbatical, uh, or would he have to leave the society and then come reapply? See, he will have to take a sabbatical basically, but uh, be assured in that if you are coming back after this, we will take you. But uh, it is not that he, you will have to leave. and again join this right. but if in case let us say suppose uh, you are a, a marine engineer basically and uh, you want to do naval architecture also now so then part time i can do from iit basically and uh, 
that is allowed when you are working also part time saturday sunday i have attended those classes saturday sunday basically and i have done my higher study like that basically so that is allowed higher okay. studies allowed part time basically. i did my mb also part time so that's allowed right sir uh, <clears throat> sir to revalidate your coc a person has to sail uh, uh, for minimum one year in the last five years. So, is the experience of classification society counted to revalidate? No. So, so you were not able to revalidate your certificate. I don't have the CDC. I don't know where it is kept. Also, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where it is kept. The day I left the sea, uh -huh. see what happens again. Again, I say I left sea at a very younger age, right. and I did not want to go back to sea because that was a thinking I could see people, you say, achha lage, wapis a jana. so I said, no, I, if I am taking a decision, I'll stay. So that CDC, I do not know where I have kept. It is not where I have taken transfers. I can't locate also. So today, if you say that, where is your chief and certificate? I don't have. Only thing is I have the knowledge, basically. Um, there's a question from Agnev, and I'll probably uh, put it in a different way, sir. You probably would have interviewed, inducted, trained so many surveyors in, during your time. Um, and so Agnev is appearing for a classification society interview. I don't know which classification, but how would you typically evaluate a person um, uh, when uh, be before you would like to you know uh, offer him a job? See, again, I said that uh, what do we look at basically? What do we look at in a person? He is already a chief engineer. He is already a master. He has commanded a ship. He has commanded the engine room possibly. He has manned people basically. So he has those skills. We give him situations basically, how will he come out with those situations? And those situations, it is right or wrong, but he is able to think, think to a point where, yes, we feel that he's, he is very narrow to the point where we want him to think. Okay. He should be able to think and find solution to a problem basically. And that is where we find that the skill we need basically. And an honest answer basically, not that he is cooking up something. Okay. And so these... Uh, questions are technical questions or more of attitude aptitude kind of questions it is it is a technical it are technical questions also everything starts with the technical only but okay. approaching towards what is your approach basically okay okay sure um, this is a good question from divya uh, difference in the route for classification surveyor versus flag surveyor uh, classification class surveyor is same basic there's no difference. I call myself as a class survey and also as a classification society survey. Right. No, it's so a flag survey. Is a flag, ah, survey. flag survey basically, uh, when you say he becomes, he represents the, uh, the government basically okay. and he does not do class survey. He do all statutory survey or or whatever survey they want to do. They can do flag state inspection. They can do port state inspection. They can do statutory surveys, but not class survey basically. Okay. The class survey will be done by the class survey basically. Okay. Also. So, sir, where do you, uh, I mean, most of your surveyors and, and where are the offices of IRS and where are most of the surveyors situated? Do they have to come to Mumbai or can they work from any other office as well? We have 26 survey stations. They are located because what happened, the travel time is very important. If I am traveling, that I'm, then rest hours become difficult. And then the fellow travels eight hours after that, you tell him immediately go to the survey, what survey he will do. So it is always better that travel time should not be more than two hours, basically. Okay. So that is how you have to open uh, locations. And then if sometimes the work starts in a site where it is only for periodic nature, maybe only for a year. So we open a site office also. And that site is basically governed by the survey location. One survey location says that I'll take care of this site and then the people will be monitored from there. We also do that also. But, it, but there are locations, 26 locations where people are located. They go from there. And at times we open a site, like let us suppose when I was a surveyor, we opened a site in Raurkila because that time steel plates testing came to us. And instead of sending somebody from Calcutta every now and then, we stationed our people for three, three months in Raurkila. And they were there for three months. And after three months, somebody else used to go basically. So that becomes a Raurkila site. Basically. That is a. Wonderful, sir. Um, Divyam is asking 26 locations you mentioned is in the world or is it in India? 26 locations are all over the, I think, uh, world, world. And India, how many, sir, approximate? Roughly around 15, 20 must be there. Uh, uh, abroad, like, I can say about starting from Sri Lanka, China, 
then uh, we have got UK, uh, Rotterdam, Germany we have Istanbul, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Oman and one or two maybe I missed. So 10, 12 here and then remaining about 15, 12, 26 are there. So you can say 11 abroad and remaining in India basically. Okay. Okay. And then sites are different. Those When I say sites, temporary sites are different. Okay. Okay. Um, Akshay, your question has been answered. As a deck officer, you can enter, but the progression may not be to the top. The chances are less. Uh, um, so one, one, uh, uh, two questions from my side, sir. Uh, and number one is a little tough question, sir. Um, um, I, I see classification society making rules, implementing, reviewing, auditing, and in compliance, right? Um, if I may know, what are the, I mean, liabilities of a classification society? I mean, we, we have classed a certain vessel. We are, we say, of course, we're not uh, responsible for the seaworthiness because anything would have happened. But um, there is a possibility that, you know, actually the work is not done properly. Oh, yes, absolutely. So absolutely. What is the liability that a classification society could have? See, this these liabilities, when, when the accident takes place and when the investigation takes place, you cannot hide, let me tell you. Right. And at that point in time, you come to know basically that things were suppressed. Basically, right. let us take the case. Uh, I'll say that uh, in your body today, you are. I can see that Gaurav is fit and fine and hale and hearty, looking at me sound. For me to see Gaurav not looking sound, I'll see some some pain in your face or some pain in your body, basically, which you can't deny and I can't deny. I'll feel it and you will also feel it and you will express it. Similarly, a vessel, when you board the vessel, if you certify a vessel, which is a already weak, basically. Weak in the sense, the structure is weak. The scantlings have gone wasted, basically. And you certify that vessel. The records will indicate, basically, that something went wrong. And you cannot say that ki, it is only the duty of the shape, uh, owner to, to maintain that during the survey. You went on board at a time of survey. If the thickness was supposed to be 16 mm and you have accepted an 8 mm plate for all over, the vessel cannot be loaded the way you want it to be loaded and you have certified it. So these things do come. When I say that, I am not saying that we have the record. Let us say that all the records are there with the class society. And we also have monitoring. We are also monitored. My honesty is checked, cross-checked. Somebody goes on board up in between also to see what this idiot has done. So it is, there is a huge right. people watching you basically. It is not that simple the way you think basically. But yes, if in case such things happen, uh, they are brought to light and definitely class society is suspected and uh, put to these problems basically when I say that. Okay. I understand, sir. I understand. Um, so, uh, another question is, I mean, you said there are 400, I mean, more than 500 people in IRS. Around 500. Maybe I'm the figure, maybe 470 yeah. or 530. Right. So, it is around that. All right. You started at a certain level a couple of decades back. Uh, you were one of the persons who rose to the top, right? So, what are the qualities uh, that differentiated you or others? I mean, which... Because from others, you know, uh, a person rises uh, and maybe others are not able to. Uh, what is it that a person could look at, uh, if you could share your experience, those those unique things? Uh, I will not say so many things, basically, but I'll say only one word. Yesterday, the industry called me for my farewell, yesterday evening. And there were almost 180 companies, previous DGs were there, previous nautical advisors were there. And it is first time in the history of, I have seen that people have called an MD and they have honored him. First of all, I'm thankful to them. Thankful to them, let me tell you, because I have never heard in my life this. And the one word, word which everybody said that Mr. Arora used to provide solution to every problem. I always said that there is no problem without a solution. If there is a problem, there has to be a solution. And there will be problems. The vessel cannot be 100% always because she is manned by people who are different. Their behavior is different. 
their circumstances are different, their thinking is different. So you will have problems basically. So, and, but there is a solution to every problem. And that is where the industry said, I'm just sharing the views of the industry. I cannot distinguish between others because I, I never thought what others are doing. I did what I wanted to do. Even today after retirement, I'm reading, I'm preparing a lot of things. Basically, I'm trying to share with the industry. I'll keep doing that job because it keeps me happy because I can't spend my eight hours busy. <laughs> so that's my job. Absolutely, sir. Um, and um, sir, there's a good question from Divya. If you could advise on the progression, uh, you, you come in as a surveyor, then what is the next position, next position? And yeah, yeah, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you. So you join as a surveyor, then you become senior surveyor. Then you become principal surveyor. Then you become senior principal surveyor. Then you become uh, chief surveyor. Then you become head operation or head technical. And then you become MD basically as of today. So this is the progression of, we consider as span of 30 years. And 30 years you can divide periodically basically. And there so are promotions. Minimum... There are certain promotions in the beginning till the rank of senior surveyor. They are sometimes time bound. But again, you have to have a minimum PMS rating for the consistent years, basically. If there's not, then the five year becomes seven years also. Uh, but uh, when you become uh, from principal surveyor onwards, it is based upon your needs in the organization and your skill, basically. Before that, it is more of a time bound. You can say five years into seven years. After that, it becomes needs and expectations, basically. Understood, sir. It's essentially time bound and then skill and your performance, yes. which yes. takes yes. you to. Uh, right, sir. And uh, uh, so the IRS, uh, is it owned by the Indian government or how is the no, ownership structure? It's not owned by anybody. Nobody is the owner of IRS. Okay. It is a Section 25 company who has no shareholders. Okay. Whatever the directors are there, the directors are from various streams from shipyards, from ship owners, from Navy, from uh, engine builders, basically, from the DG shipping side, one fellow is on the board, and uh, uh, but nobody owns it, basically. And whatever we earn as profit, what you say, though it's a non-profit organization, but you cannot say that because you don't know how, how you'll perform next year. So you do make some excess, but excess is spent on the training and research and for the welfare of the organization, basically. That's nice, sir. Great. Um, and, uh, I think we've answered more or less all the questions, uh, uh, Devendra, I, uh, uh, let, but let me just confirm from you, uh, can you move from a classification society to DG shipping and vice versa? Is there a provision for that? There's nothing like that. If DG wants, DG has taken a lot of class service you have seen in the past, basically. It gives advantage to them. A trained person is coming. Why not take him? Right. And if somebody want, wants to come from DG to us, we also don't mind, basically. But there's nothing like an agreement that he is there and I have to take it and he is class A, they have to take it. There's no such. And there's nothing like that. If in case you have worked at this level, you will work at the same level over there so that they have their own process, uh, process basically. Right. right, right. Um, all right, sir. I think we've done with more or less all the questions. Um, just so that everyone knows, uh, sir is also on the platform C and Beyond. And if you probably need one-to-one -one counseling as per sir's convenience, sir has also agreed to, uh, you know, uh, give that as well in case you would like to uh, have that. So just a poll question on, uh, would you like to have one-to-one -one career counseling on the progression in classification societies or general career progression? How many one of you would like to have? And uh, I, what I'll just do quickly is I'll just share the link where which uh, um, you could possibly have a look on uh, uh, how, about the booking of a particular session with sir. And uh, just share this link. Um, okay, huh. Prateek's question, uh, uh, that is still to be answered. And uh, uh, what was your question, Prateek? Uh, sir, the non-IAS, IACS, why was the non-IACS and how was it formed? I mean, because everyone would like to go for IACS classification only. Why was it uh, formed? 
when IRS was formed, she was non IX society. And there were many IX societies. Okay. We became IX later on, basically. Okay. So you progress in life. Right from the first day, you can't become IX, basically, because you have not participated in the rulemaking process of the IX. You cannot understand their working, basically. You understand the, the experience you gain as non IX. Uh, and then uh, you apply, like, let me tell you, if, even today there are many societies who have applied to become IX member. So they are non-IX societies, basically. They're, their quality is and they're, they're audited. Almost it takes about a year or two years for audit process to complete, basically. And then they become IX, basically. So somebody cannot stay away from, I am born today, tomorrow I am IX. It is, I think, very, very difficult, basically. So non-IX societies do become IX societies. And that is how the and non ix societies does not mean that they don't have quality. non ix societies means they are still learning or they have learned and or they are still to gain experience more than what IX societies have got. And that is where the, when you talk about confidence, the 90% of the world's tonnage is classed with IX, only 10% tonnage is classed with non ix basically. Right. Um, right. Siddharth, is asking, so basically you send CVs to uh, the respective classification societies to get a job. That's probably what you do. What we are trying to do at Sea and Beyond is probably, you know, just consolidate these openings and maybe make you guys aware, uh, you know, aware of it so that you have one consolidated platform to look at the openings and then apply from there and maybe partner with a few classification societies as well. But but that's something which we could help you, uh, Siddharth, on, on that as well. Anthony question. Anthony's question is. Um, uh, can a sailing chief engineer do freelancing as part-time surveyor? Sir mentioned you cannot work as a freelancing uh, surveyor. Uh, um, right. So, uh, Pratik, there was no need for non-ISES surveys. It's it's a progress. So, when you start, you are a non-ISES uh, classification, but then you become once you have some experience. Uh, um, some people continue also, like not all non ix societies want to become IX societies. They continue like non ix Because there are uh, owners who would, who say that hey, I don't require, why should it? Because IX society's expenses will be high. Because I'm spending money with IX membership, European Union membership. Uh, that money I'll recover from where basically. Because it's a huge cost, let me tell you. We participate in rulemaking process. We travel from our country to other country to make rule. We take that assignment with us. Then we do research and then we go and discuss amongst each other before a rule is made. So there is a huge amount of investment of time, energy and resources, basically. Definitely the cost is different. So some owners wish that uh, for me, standards are good. They are adopting something and the vessel is maintained. They don't. Uh, it is uh, up to the owner to decide to have a non ix class or ix classes. Because the flag recognizes that non ix class, basically. Like Maldives, basically, Maldives and all, they do recognize non ix classes, basically. Understood. Right, so uh, let me take two final questions, uh, two final polls. Uh, number one is we're launching a commercial shipping course. Uh, and I just want to know from the audience how many of you would be interested to know more about it. And so accordingly, we'll share some uh, flyers with you. Uh, and uh, that's number one. Let's have a quick answer to this poll, please. So the idea for C and Beyond is that we are planning to come up with those courses which help a person into transitioning from sea to shore or to help a person in the progression while you are at shore. So we're not focusing on sea going competencies. There are a lot of companies, people who are doing it. We want to focus on soft skills or other competencies which are required for you to progress uh, uh, over here. And thanks for all your uh, feedback uh, on, on this question. Let me take one final question on the feedback. And this feedback is on the particular session, which we just did. Um, were your expectations met? Um, uh, was the session useful for you? And how would you rate this session, please? And uh, sir, one thing I must say, I mean, two hours <laughs> you spent with us, 
and that's that's really a, a lot of time uh, you know uh, you know giving it back to the uh, to the society to the community really appreciate it and honestly having so many audience till the very end that you know shows um, you know the kind of value all of us have gained so thank you so much uh, sir for your uh, for your time uh, really thank uh, you thank you very much thank you so nice of you I was happy to share my thoughts. Uh, anytime, anything, still, what happens? We we are not sure sometimes uh, which road to cross. Basically, you can always approach. Not a problem. We are available, and uh, my aim is to see that how I can give back to the society. And I would like to give back to society. Like I said, I am still reading. I am preparing something. I am working on alternate fuels and decarbonization chapters. Basically, where I am going to give lecture on to people on how to bunker various different types of fuels, what precautions to take. Because future fuels, which when I say, because I'm a member of that future fuels magazine, you must have, which was your last uh, line, which you wrote, basically. The purpose is that today, my seafarer, basically, I don't want with a sudden change in the technology, he should or she should suffer. Because the STCW convention will take good time before my seafarer gets used to that qualification. But the ships will start running. And when the ships will start running, where are the people trained for that? So I'm going, I'm currently trying to convince the various training institutes that please start having courses for all levels, right from the ratings to the master, so that they are aware of the future fuels which we feel are going to come in the next two to three years. Diesel fuel, I put in my hand, wash my hands, clean the cloth, and I'm happy, not a problem. Not at all worried that something will go wrong with me. But other fuels which are coming, basically, they are dangerous or not dangerous. I should be aware how to handle it, basically. I should be aware. So that's what it is, basically, awareness. And for that, I'm preparing for them. Right now, syllabus is not there, basically. But it's I'm preparing my own knowns and unknowns, basically. Trying to compare with the diesel fuel, what all things you should take precaution when other fields are going to go there. So that people know when tomorrow when the ships will be there, they will be called on the ship and they'll go because they will not wait for that. The competency is accepted. But competency doesn't mean only SCCW convention. Competency also means that you have the knowledge about this. And uh, hopefully, I think uh, people, some institutes have accepted also. I'm preparing the course for them. Maybe it will be useful to them. And I hope these people should attend those courses, basically. It's not going to be costly affair, basically. It is an awareness which you should have. A marine engineer, master, chief engineer, they are very smart people. Their pickup is fast. They grasp very early, basically. So I think uh, whatever, and if in case you come across wherever such courses are there, please do that because you should be prepared for these type of ships coming in next three years, let me tell you. So I can only say that and I can say best of luck to all of us. Why I say all of us? Because for me also, because I have to prepare these courses for you in a sound mind and sound body. And for you, you please attend those courses. And whenever you have any problem, Gaurav is there, I am there. We, we will be able to again share these sessions. Basically, it is not that uh, everything is money in life. Sometimes we need to see that how best we share with our own colleagues also who are younger to us. Basically. So with that, I'll say thank you to all of you. May God bless all of you and may God take care of all of us. Thank you.